Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and this is my Sphinx Flying Wing. The Sphinx is a 27-inch wingspan airplane designed for one thing, fun, and lots of it. Being small with only a 27-inch wingspan and having an all-up weight of under 250 grams, the Sphinx is the perfect airplane to go bash around the backyard or your local park. Built out of durable EPP foam, even the hardest crashes often leave the airplane completely unharmed. The airplane has a top speed of approximately 90 miles an hour, so it's no slowpoke, and it is quite maneuverable and a whole lot of fun. So if you're the type of pilot who likes to say, hey, hold my beer and watch this, this is the airplane for you. Start off this build by trimming approximately two inches off of the back of each Elevon on the inside. This will make room for the propeller in the back of the airplane. With two inches trimmed off, there is enough room for up to a five inch propeller, which is more than enough for this aircraft. Once you've trimmed off the Elevon sections, also trim off the back sections on the center fuselage part as I'm doing here. From here, it's time to glue the plane together. Take a good amount of glue and put it along the inside of each of the two center sections and then press them together. Move both sides around and then pull them apart, being sure both sides are coated. Then repeat this process with the outer part and the wing section. Again, press them together, move them around, then pull them apart. After approximately 20 minutes, this glue will be dry. Once it's dry, then you will press the wing sections together for a permanent bond. With the glue dry, you can now press the parts together. Press the parts together firmly to be sure they adhere. Line up the front of the aircraft then work your way to the back, pushing together first with light pressure, then with a lot of pressure to be sure it bonds. Now it's time to cut the spar. Cut the spar into two 12 inch sections. This will get embedded just behind the battery bay. Using the spar as a guide, mark the two endpoints. then with a straight edge, cut along the section with a knife. Do this for both the top and the bottom of the aircraft. If you like, you can open up the bay a little bit more with a hot work tool like I have here made from a soldering gun. Fill the slot you have just made with a good amount of glue, then embed your spar. Again, repeat this for both the top and the bottom side. The spars should align right over top of each other. The motor mount consists of a wooden laser cut block and a foam block that fits the back of the airplane. Check the contour to figure out how this fits. The long side goes underneath. Coat both parts with a good amount of glue and then simply push into place on the airplane. Again, this is a contact adhesive so you can remove it and push it back together in 20 minutes. The service should be installed approximately halfway down the wing. Mark the area where you want the servo to be installed with a pen or pencil. I usually stand my servos upright for more support. Cut the area you marked out with a knife. If just using a knife, you can cut all the way down through the foam out the other side of the plane, or you can use a hot work tool made from a soldering gun like I'm doing here. Either way works. The plane is very thin and thus cutting all the way through doesn't affect the airflow with a servo installed. To install the servo, just add a bit of glue to the sides of the servo. This will make it easy to remove in case you crash the airplane and strip the gears. You can simply drop a knife down the sides of the servo and pull it out. Then use a knife and cut a trace to embed the wires into the foam wing. You only want to cut about an eighth of an inch deep or so into this. You can open it up with the hot work tool like I'm doing here or simply push it straight in. Embed the wire into this track and make it go into the battery bay. Next, we'll install the control horns. Line the control horn up with the edge of the servo horn. That way you've got a nice straight shot. Then using a good amount of pressure, press the control horn into the foam to make a mark. Then use a knife to push the two marks all the way through the other side of the foam. You can use a control horn for this if you want. Add a little bit of glue to your control horn base and then slide one of the locking plates onto the control horn, then move it back. 
Then add a good bit of glue to either of the tines and press back through the foam. Then flip the plane over, slide the other locking place plate down into place, and then slide back to lock it. Be sure to add a little bit of glue so the locking plate does not move. The control rods on this airplane are made from a threaded rod with a clevis on each end. Thread one of the threaded rods into the clevis just two or three turns to start. Then, using the aircraft as a guide and the other clevis, cut off the threaded rod so that you're going to have at least five threads into the new clevis. Then, simply take the clevises, screw them together onto the rods, and connect to the airplane. You want the trailing edge to have approximately 1 16th of an inch of upward reflex. The winglet should have a little bit of toe in. I use the winglets as a guide and move in approximately 3 16 of an inch into the leading edge and then exit the trailing edge with a knife. This will keep the plane from wagging the nose in maneuvering. This is what the aircraft electronics bay looks like in the front. You'll notice the speed control, the receiver, and even the video transmitter are located towards the front of the airplane. This is to keep the nose weight where it needs to be, as this plane can very easily be made tail heavy by accident. And that's all there is to it. Enjoy the airplane and have a good time flying.